What's up traders? Today uh, is, uh, I don't know what it today is, is 9-13, September 13, 2022. And uh, AKRO came to my radar. I pretty much got in, I don't know where I got in. I think I got in at like 19.7. It ran all the way up to like $32. And um, I was trying to short the 52 week break of K A K R O. And um, unfortunately, the 52 week break, I kept going. Can you believe it? In this market, we have a mover that goes up 150%. Anyway, so I bought it correctly like at 19.7 and I sold at like 21.7. So I initially made like 1500 bucks and then I started short like 25.7 and then I shorted like 30.50. So I had a 28.2 average. And then I covered that position for flat. Anyway, the market went down like, I don't know, like 1300 points. I traded SQQQ, I was buying it at 46. Went all the way up to, what did SQQ go to? SQQQ went all the way up to 47. I was buying it at 44 this morning. So just, just uh, a brutal day for the market. I could have held SQQQ. Uh, that I made some money on that and my other stock I traded was ETNB ETNB was just another um, Another high institution. It seems like what has opened what has been good so far today was AKRO Which was like 99% institutions and the other one was ETNB ETNB was like 82% institutions. So we had a lot of institutionally owned stocks Anyway, so I covered a AKRO for flat, 28, covered at 28. AKRO, I bought it at 19.7. And my bias was very bullish initially. I just didn't think it would do it. It had phase 2B trial. And uh, and, and honestly, I thought it's going to just sell off. But it seems like the stock pretty much held all day at 25. And now we're pushing 30. So we're going to go through the recap. And uh, that would be it. You guys have. What's up, traders? Welcome to my stream. Here we got uh, my midday recap. Uh, I kind of ran a little bit late on this one, but always clicked green. I got a little bit in trouble in AKRO, started shorting a little too early. So, AKRO, um, this is AKRO over here. So, I had the right idea phase 2B trial. I was kind of buying it over here at around um, about one one nine nineteen seventy. I think I bought it around here at nineteen seventy. Around here nineteen seventy. I was down like seventy cents at one point. So um, it was it was very choppy to trade. I'll tell you the truth. Due to the fact that it's ninety percent institutions. Bought it over here. Sold most in the twenty threes. And pretty much left it at, left left it to that. And then it started, you know, I started short around, I don't know, 20, 25, I started short at 26. And then I added to like 28, 28, 5. So this has been a monster move on the way up here. I actually tried to trap shorts underneath VWAP. So it traded very choppy. I mean, I mean, if a stock, if I see a stock going up to $32, nowhere in my mind do I think, hey, it's just going to pull under VWAP here and just going to trap shorts. So it went way higher than I thought. I'm like, I'm like, in a normal situation, I mean, the stock should not have gone below VWAP and should have held VWAP throughout the whole time. But this has been a tricky stock. And um, I underestimated due to the fact that it went below VWAP. So it didn't trade organically whatsoever. It trapped shorts here. And uh, usually it should have just died off like they usually do. Um, under VWAP signifies something of weakness. So I went long here, got out here, went short here, and it actually went against me like $5 a share. And I actually added at 30.20, so I had a 28 average. Next thing you know, I could have covered for flat or a, pretty much a gain of $3 a share in the downside. But, you know, I left it alone after that. I didn't want to mess with it on the short side, so I was definitely wrong uh, on my short. And then I got out for flat. I was right on my long, but I was wrong on my short. My other two stocks I made money was ET, ETNB, which was high institutionally, another high institutionally, uh, high institutionally owned stock. 
the stock was just holding this wedge pattern formation over here and eventually hit like 775 before pretty much just crashing out of the open so i kind of bought that break i kind of bought i don't know this break i bought around 680 to like seven dollars so it gave like 20 cents and then came back down to the trend line and eventually just went below the trend line kind of just died off this has been the trend line that it was supposed to hold at 710 and then it pretty much went to 750 and it actually held that most of the day and uh pretty pretty nice i could have taken that short there at 715 though just risking off this amazing trend line here so um etmb i just went long uh, my other stock that I, I made money was sqqq sqqq i was buying this one around 44 dollars i think around over here 44 something it hit all the way up to um if you see how high it hit it hit 47 which was pretty retarded for uh, for a stock this this much to make four dollars a share uh, so i was buying it over here somewhere uh, let's see if i remember exactly i was buying it right there that's the candle i bought 44.10 and after that never looked back hit 47 on the dot and uh, that is just impressive to see anyway Dow, just because the dow tanks 1300 points that does not mean you cannot make money and i ended up making money and I could, and I left a lot of money on the table on SQQQ, and I traded ATNB correctly. I traded AKRO correctly, but my AKRO short was just not that great. And then I got out for flat, and uh, I'll be wrong sometimes. I, I thought <laughs> it's not gonna go 150% on a 95% institutionally owned stock. And uh, you mean, I mean, it traded very, very crappy. I mean, it trapped a lot of shorts. You can see here how it trapped shorts underneath VWAP here, right about here, it trapped shorts right there. And in a normal situation, it it should not have, you know, when I see it goes under VWAP and it doesn't hold, I mean, that sounds, sounds weakness. And instead of that being a weakness, they ended up being a trap. And then the trap, went from 21 to 32 a 50 percent trap for shorts under vwap so that has been very tricky i don't know why they did that just to piss people off just to just to think that the stock is weak when in fact it was very very strong so anyway that that is it for me i will definitely um make notes of high institutionally owned stocks and uh, not underestimate it, them besides the fact that well, we haven't been in a market where we had 100% movers, but today we did, and hopefully we will tomorrow. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. And that's my PL for today. And that is it for me. You guys have a good one. Thumbs up and subscribe for more.